Well, good morning. At least I think it's morning. Anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about these uh, siphons here that you see I've got on, on these uh, grow beds. Now, they work very much like a bell siphon does, but they're not a bell siphon. They, uh, they're not designed that way. Now, the reason I uh, chose to do this design rather than a bell siphon is because I wanted to have these uh, grow beds flexible such that I could have a fill, like it's filling over there, and just have it drain out at this level continuously so that the water level stayed at a constant level uh, near the top. Or I could change it on the fly where the water level would go up and down and cycle so that uh, you, know, you could dry the roots out a little bit and then let the water come back up and soak them and then the water would go back down so that air could get to the roots periodically. Now this one takes about 20 minutes to cycle through that. And uh, anyway, why this is not a bell siphon, let me uh, get into that in a little bit. Now, now the first thing I want to do though, is I want to explain, for those of you who might not know, what a siphon is, a basic siphon. You know, and I learned about a basic siphon when I was, I guess, three or four years old. I, I watched my father uh, do some things on the farm that we had, and he had to be rather self-reliant because we were poor. We didn't have, you know, the ability to go out and buy anything we needed. We had to make something if we had to do something. So, what, he, what we had to do a lot was... We had to go down to the feed store to get feed for the cows and the chickens and things like that. Now, what my father had to go down to the feed store was this old 1936 Ford pickup truck. You can see a you can see a picture of it right there if I've got it upright. And this old uh, for a pickup truck, ran fine, it ran okay. I do remember one particular thing about it, is it had a hole in the front bumper where you could actually put a crank in there and crank start it, just like the old Model T's. Now it wasn't in there all the time, it was just kind of in back of the back seat, kind of like you'd have a, a tire changing kit back there with a jack, you know, and a lug wrench and stuff. This one also had a crank behind the back seat. And I do remember a couple of occasions where my dad had to actually start it using the crank. But anyway, uh, so anyway, the point is, is he had this old truck, and uh, the truck had a gas gauge in it, but the gas gauge didn't work. So we knew how far away the feed store was, and he knew how much gas he would have to have to make sure he got there and back. And so the only thing this truck was ever used for was going to the feed store. So what he did was he would siphon gas out of uh, the other car he had. And here's a picture right here. Now that picture um, was taken a couple of years before I was born. And that was at my grandfather's house. And you can see my mother and grandmother there talking about something. And my older sister there sitting on the fender. But anyway, he would siphon gas out of that car and put it into a, a watering can. And I think the can, it looked something like this can right here. And, and I think the can was actually not meant for watering a garden. It was meant for putting water in a radiator. Now, you don't see those these days. But in those days, they had them all over the place. And you find them in the old gas stations. You have to put some water in your radiator. That's what you use to fill up the radiator. Now, anyway, so, bottom line of all that was, he would go to the old car, the old truck, and he had a little special hose that he made up, and he would, and it had a little nozzle that he put on the end of it, and what he did was he would siphon gas out of the car and fill up the, uh, the uh, watering can with it, and I think it held couple of gallons, I suppose, and then he'd walk over to the old pickup truck, the 1936 Ford, and put that water in, or put that gas in the gas tank, and off we go to the feed store. 
And that's where I learned what siphon was because I was fascinated. I guess I was three years old, four years old. I'd sit and watch him, and he would suck on that hose, and then, you know, it started running, and then he'd push it right in the gas tank, the, the gas can, the watering can real fast, and it would just come out. And it would just run and run and run, and you go, what in the world, that's really cool. And then the way to stop it when it got full is he put the gas, pulled the gas, the hose out of the gas tank, and then it would stop. And he put the cap back on the gas tank, and he'd go there and do his thing with the gas can. Now, I remember being fascinated. How does that work? So, anyway, let me explain how that works, and then explain how this bell siphon works where it cycles up and down. Okay, here is a side view of one of my grow beds. Now, if you want to make a grow bed that you're going to use for a floating raft system, what you do is you fill that thing up, and then you put your... Uh, styrofoam or your floating raft on top and, and everything just works great. Now, in order to do that, you of course have got to have something to fill it up with. And in order to uh, have a constant flow of water through that, you've got to have something to drain it with. Now, what I've done is I've put a drain on the side and it's an overflow pipe and it runs down into a catch basin and that goes back into the system and recirculates. But when this, when it, when it is configured like this, what you have is a uh, water coming in and water going out the overflow pipe at the same rate that it's coming in, so that uh, you know you you get you maintain a constant level of water. Now, if you want to turn this into a fill and drain type operation, where you uh, can have uh, your roots exposed to air for a period of time and it goes up and down. The way to do it is you add another length of pipe on the overflow that extends down into the water to the depth that you want it to uh, go down to, the water, and when it cycles. And then what happens is as the water rises and it gets high enough, the uh, overflow will fill up and then it will actually start a siphon and it will suck the water out of the tank faster than it's being filled up and it'll cycle back and forth like that. Now that's kind of a very simplistic explanation of how this works but there's a little more to it than that. That's the basic structure and and the trick to it is is to build the size of the pipes on the overflow of the right diameter. Now the reason you got to pay attention to the diameter of the overflow pipe is because when you do it this way the siphon has to start by itself and, and that's a little tricky thing to do. Now you see this guy here who's siphoning out of a gas tank or like my dad used to do you know you can suck that uh, water let's call it out of there as fast as you want to fill up that hose so it's full of of liquid and then you know the weight of it will pull the water down through there well if you don't have somebody sitting there starting it you know and it has to start itself there's a way to do that but it's a little tricky now the principle is really quite simple but you know simple things are overlooked a lot and it basically goes like this you see, you've got a pipe over here that's putting water into the grow bed. And it's putting in that water at a constant rate. It's the same all the time. Now, when you get over here to the overflow pipe, that rate has to be high enough, and this pipe has to be narrow enough, so that it will basically fill up this pipe and, and go down here a little ways and fill up the cavity of the pipe so that, so that what happens is the water, the weight of the water itself will go down this pipe and it will start pulling the water down. And the trick to that is, is to have enough volume go down through here when this thing is full so that it starts to go by itself. If you just have water you know, streaming very slowly in here, this will just trickle out and keep trickling out. You've got to increase the volume to the point where it's not a trickle anymore, it's filling up this pipe. And when it does fill up the pipe, 
this extra length here, because of the gravity, will start pulling it through much faster than, uh, you know, than it would otherwise. And that's how it works. So you get the water input at a constant rate, and that constant rate is enough so that it'll fill this thing up, and it will fill this pipe up because it's a little bit too much for this pipe to just trickle out all the time. And then when this pipe fills up and it starts to pull down, then it'll just pull the rest of that water. And because of the length, the longer the length that you have, the more water will come through there because of the sheer weight. Anyway, that's how you make these. Maybe I've babbled on about it too much. It's really quite simple. You just uh, got to get it flowing, get it started. And it works really well. See, if you look in here right now, you can see this one is down uh, always. And I think what it's doing is, yeah, you look down here, there's no flow. Well, you can't see it, but I put, there's no flow coming out. So right now it's filling up. Now if we wait here, we're not going to wait, but if we waited long enough, it would fill up. And you can see right here, there's a little outline where, you know, where the, uh, you can see that, where the uh, water level usually gets. Usually it gets up to about here, and then it, it'll block up the flow to where air is not coming back through. And then down she goes, and it'll start, and it'll just suck that water out of there faster than it's coming in over there. And then as soon as it gets down to the bottom of this pipe here where there's, you know, it's open, then it'll break vacuum because it'll start sucking air in there, and it stops, and it fills up again. That's how it works. Okay, so now the reason I do this, the reason I configured it this way, is because I can either have this, a fill and drain kind of a thing, where I can kind of play Kratky a little bit, and use that, or... I can pull this off and then it turns into this. This is just a floating raft system and it just runs out. This won't siphon only because it doesn't have a pipe going down and uh, it just it's a constant floating raft kind of thing as is this one but this one cycles a little bit because you know there's this distance right here so I, this is a floating raft and it goes up and down but this one is also a floating raft, but it goes up and down a little bit more because as you can see I've got a little pipe in there. So, that's the advantage of doing it this way is uh, if you have a bell siphon, you're just stuck. Uh, and that's all you have. It's a fill and drain thing. But, if you have one of these, the advantage is you can put it in the side of your tank instead of drilling a hole in the bottom and you can either have it as a uh, overflow type thing where it's a floating raft system or you can have it like a bell siphon does just like this without the bell siphon.